Uh, the White House has called this news conference in considerable measure because we're told the president is going to announce on this occasion his nominee to the Supreme Court. You'll recall that Thurgood Marshall, uh, the champion of liberals, uh, retired from the court last week, just over 80, saying he didn't want to continue, and we are almost certain the president is going to nominate this man who is well, beside him. I am very pleased to announce that I will nominate Judge Clarence Thomas to serve as Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas was my first appointee to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, where he served for over a year. And I'll believe he'll be a great justice. He is the best person for this position. Judge Thomas compiled an excellent record at Holy Cross. He graduated from Yale Law School and served with distinction in the Missouri Attorney General's office uh, in the Reagan-Bush administration uh, and in, in our administration, my administration. Uh, he's a native of Pinpoint near Savannah, Georgia, where he was raised by his grandparents. His background includes a strong emphasis on education as the key to a better life. And he attended rigorous Catholic schools where he excelled. After spending a year at the Immaculate Conception Seminary in Conception Junction, Missouri, Clarence transferred to Holy Cross College in Worcester, uh, where he supported himself through loans and scholarships and jobs and graduated with honors in 1971. After graduation from Yale Law School, he worked for then Missouri Attorney General John Danforth and spent two and a half years litigating cases of all description. In 1977, Judge Thomas practiced law in the private sector, and in 1979, he rejoined Senator Danforth as an legislative assistant in the U.S. Senate. In 1981, uh, President Reagan appointed him Assistant Secretary for Civil Rights in the Department of Education. From 1982 uh, to 1990, he served as President Reagan's Chairman of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And I appointed him to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia in 1990. I have followed this man's career for some time. And he has excelled in everything that he has attempted. He is a delightful and warm, intelligent person who has great empathy and a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, he's also a fiercely independent thinker with an excellent legal mind who believes passionately in equal opportunity for all Americans. He will approach the cases that come before the court with a commitment to deciding them fairly as the facts and the law require. Judge Thomas's life is a model for all Americans, and he's earned the right uh, to sit on this nation's highest court, and I am very proud indeed uh, to nominate him for this position, and I trust that the Senate uh, will confirm this able man uh, promptly. And now, Judge Thomas, if you'd like to say a few words, and then what we'll do is questions for either of us, and then if you finish those, then I'll be glad to stay and take questions on a wide array of subjects. You're welcome, and we're just so pleased you came up. Thank you. All yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm honored and humbled by your nomination of me to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. As a child, I could not dare dream that I would ever see the Supreme Court, not to mention be nominated to it. Indeed, my most vivid childhood memory of the Supreme Court were the, or was the impeach Earl Warren sign which lined Highway 17 near Savannah. I didn't quite understand who this Earl Warren fellow was, but I knew he was some, in some kind of trouble. I thank all of those who have helped me along the way and who've helped me to this point and, and this moment in my life especially my grandparents who are especially my grandparents my mother and the nuns all of whom were adamant that I grow up to make something of myself 
I also thank my wonderful wife and my wonderful son. In my view, only in America can this, could this have been possible. I look forward to the confirmation process and an opportunity to be of service once again to my country and to be an example to those who are where I was and to show them that indeed there is hope. Thank you again, Mr. President. Now, well done. Now, either of us have had questions, as you can understand, uh, Judge Thomas, the next important step for him is going up for confirmation. <clears throat> and as with every predecessor for the Supreme Court, uh, I'm sure you'll understand if he d won't take questions on specific issues or philosophy or things of that nature. But if you have any for him or for me about this appointment uh, or matters relating to the court, I'd be glad to respond. I know he would. And then, as I say, it's been a while, and uh, we want to go ahead and just have a general press conference on any other subjects that come to mind. Mr. President, um, how will you answer concerns stemming from Judge Thomas's days as chairman of the EEOC that in that post he was uh, somewhat insensitive to the concerns of the elderly and civil rights um, advocates and that he didn't aggressively pursue uh, their complaints? Well, obviously that complaint, uh, if it was even raised in his confirmation hearings uh, for the second highest court in the land, uh, were satisfactorily answered. It is my view that the complaints are unfounded, of course, but uh, I doubt if anybody had strongly felt that, that he would have been uh, confirmed for his present position. Mr. President? Yeah. You, last year you vetoed the civil rights bill saying it could lead to quotas. Today you made a nomination that could at least be seen as quota-based. How do you explain this apparent inconsistency? I don't, I don't even see an appearance of inconsistency, because what I did was look for the best man, and uh, Clarence Thomas's was name was high on the list uh, when the previous nominee went forth, Judge, Judge Souter, just Mr. Justice Souter now. And so I don't accept that at all. And the fact that he is black and a minority has nothing to do with this in the sense that he is the best qualified at this time. And we had a very thorough screening process then. We had one now that we put into forward gear very fast, but we didn't have to start uh, from square one. So Clarence Thomas, seasoned now by more experience on the bench, fits my description of the best man at the right time, or the best person at the right time, because other uh, women were, were considered as well. But do you see how it could be perceived? No, I so? can't see it. Was race a factor whatsoever, sir? I don't see it at all. The fact that he's a minority, you heard his testimony to the kind of life he's had, and I think that speaks eloquently for itself. But I kept my word to the American people and to the Senate by picking the best man for the job on the merits. With and the fact he's minority, uh, so much the better. But that is not the factor, and I would strongly resent uh, any charge that might be forthcoming on quotas when it relates to appointing the best man to the court. That's the kind of thing I stand for, not opposed to. Just so I could ask the question, was race yeah. a factor whatsoever? Though, well, I tried to answer it just then as best I could. Nice try for the second go around. Susan. If I could follow up, I mean, there are many people who felt that, in fact, that that was a plus, not that it was a factor or a quota, but that, in fact, since the court represents all the people, there ought to be a minority member. Did you at all feel that way? That this oh, was yeah, but I don't feel there's a quota. I don't feel that I had to appoint, uh, nominate a, a black American at this time for the court. Uh, I express my respect for the ground that uh, Judge, uh, Mr. Justice Marshall plowed, uh, but I don't feel there should be a, a black seat on the court or an ethnic seat on the court, if that's what your question is. I, I would reiterate, I think he's the best man. And if, the, if, if uh, credit accrues to him uh, for coming up through a tough life as a minority in this country, um, so much the better. So much the better. I love what he said at the end. It proves you can do it. Get the job done. And so if that... If that, uh, that does nothing but uh, enhance the court, in my view, but uh, I, just, I just really want you to know I, we looked at this list uh, with an idea of, of really finding the best, and I think that's what we did. Yeah, Charles? Uh, I wonder if I could ask a question of Judge Thomas, Mr. President. You made reference, sir, to uh, Chief Justice Warren, the Warren Court, known as a liberal court, but one that advanced a lot of things uh, in the way of civil rights and on behalf of minorities. How do you feel about that court vis-a-vis -vis the very conservative court that you seem to be joining? 
Well, I think that uh, many of the questions that I will be asked during my confirmation process will perhaps bring that comparison out. And I've got a respect for that process. I'll have to refrain from making that sort of comparison at this point. Not, not even a personal reflection, sir, on what the Warren Court did for uh, minorities? Not even a personal reflection. Judge, a question for you. What do you say to critics who say the only reason you're being picked is because you're black? I think a lot worse things have been said. Uh, I disagree with that, but I'll have to live with it. You refer to the president. <laughs> How about that for a name? Well, I also say I didn't make this election. <laughs> president, <coughs> civil rights groups, in particular Ben Hook, has signaled that you're in for the mother of all confirmations hearings if you nominated um, Judge Thomas. What do you have to say about that? Well, one, I, I find that very surprising from a man that's as fair as Ben Hooks. So, and I learned something in this job, as some of the others that cover us regularly here understand, and that is that I don't, I don't like to, to comment on a statement attributed to somebody until I've actually read it. But uh, I, uh, I think when you go back and look at the support that Judge Thomas had for the, uh, for the bench that he now serves on, uh, that that in itself uh, will will take care of any arguments that someone I just don't want to feel that Ben Hook said that I know him I respect him and uh, I don't think that uh, that he would uh, say that about Judge Thomas I'll be honest with you at his confirmation hearings before it was said that uh, if he was accepted to the bench but if you brought him back to the Supreme Court that they didn't feel that he would be ready for that at the yeah time. well he's uh, he isn't the Attorney General nor the general counsel to the president, nor the chief of staff, nor those of us who screened this nomination. It is our judgment he will. I think you're going to find many, many uh, senators uh, that disagree with the fact he's not ready. Look, I'm not suggesting there'll be no opposition, but you put it on quite a personal one with Ben, and I just can't believe he would make a statement like that. I've differed with him on a lot of things and agreed with him on many, but I, I simply do not want to accept that until I see it. I'm not questioning your motives or challenging your authenticity of the statement, but please let me just uh, defer until I take a look at it. President? Yo. President, when you Captain. elected Judge Souter, your aides very clearly put out the word that Edith Jones of Houston uh, was, was the runner-up and likely would be the nominee if another vacancy came up. What happened to change the equation? Well, uh, she's a very able justice, a judge. Uh, she was given consideration then and now and I just felt that uh, Judge Thomas, with his seasoning now, uh, is best prepared to serve. It was that. It was not a demeaning or putting down of anybody else, because there were some very good names brought to my attention. And I might say, uh, you know, this just happened at last week, and some will be saying, well, was the th screening process thorough? And the point I want to make is that I have met several times since uh, Judge Souter's uh, sending to the bench to discuss what would happen if a Supreme Court justice stepped down with no one particularly in mind but just to be ready so uh, consideration was given to a wide array of candidates but we'd already done a lot of homework but you ask about Edith Edith who comes from my hometown and I have nothing but high regard and high esteem for her but I decided uh, on the advice of, of people that I trust that this is the way to go. Mr. President, the appointments made by President Reagan and you have put the court on a conservative road. Is, is, is that what you would like to see for the next 10 or 15 years, to reverse some of the more liberal rulings in the past 20 years? Look, I don't know how, how Judge Thomas, when he becomes Mr. Justice Thomas, will come down on every issue. And indeed, I didn't discuss specific issues, issues with him. I didn't discuss them with uh, uh, Judge Souter when before he became Mr. Justice Souter. But I did look at this. Would he faithfully interpret the Constitution and avoid the tendency to legislate from the bench? And that's a broad consideration, but that was certainly in his favor in my view. And I don't know whether he'll agree with positions that our administration takes or overthrow decisions or change positions that, that we think are, are right. Uh, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that he faithfully interpret the Constitution, and I am 100% convinced that that's exactly what he'll do. So we're not trying to put a philosophical balance on this court. We're not trying to philosophically affect it. I want, and I've said this uh, long ago, long before I became president, 
that the main consideration in addition to excellence and qualification is this concept of interpreting the Constitution and not legislating from the federal bench. President, we yeah, Mr. Master, come in here. Sir? In the last several weeks, you or you and your White House counsel have had to act to tighten the restrictions on travel of your subordinates. During this period of time, has Governor Sununu come to you at all and expressed any apology for any embarrassment that this might have caused you? Ma'am, Ma John, I'll take your question in one sec, but if we if we done the Supreme Court questions, because I don't want to get uh, 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 Clarence Thomas on the eve of his uh, hearings caught up in a lot of domestic questions of one kind or another, including this one, which I'll be glad to respond to. But, but if you let me come back to you as soon as I ask him to uh, go into the cool office that's behind us. But if there's any couple more on this, and then we'll move on to Mr. Mashik. Yeah. Can I ask Judge Thomas this about uh, quotas? Probably you did. Again, I give you a similar answer. I, when I was in a policy-making role, I said what I had to say about quotas. Uh, as a judge, uh, I have not had an opportunity to rule on that issue. Uh, but uh, to the extent that I have any additional comments, I think, again, out of respect for the advise and consent process, I'll have to leave it for that moment. Mr. President, does that also yeah. apply to questions involving whether or not there's a constitutional right to privacy? Yes. I have another question for the President. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did your list of uh, possible candidates include anyone with known pro-choice views or any candidate whose views on abortion you were unsure of? Uh, probably, because I don't know. I didn't ask about that. There was, uh, there was uh, a lot of talk about the possibility of the Hispanic being, being named. And yes. indeed, uh, uh, Judge Garza was interviewed. He was. Can you tell us what your thinking on that uh, was? Why well, has it returned to Clarence Thomas uh, instead of the Hispanic? Well, I think experience in, uh, in government, uh, experience on the higher court, uh, figured into this, but listen, that should not degrade uh, Judge Garza uh, at all. The man is a very well quite qualified individual. Indeed, he flew up and had a conversation with uh, Boyd and Gray and with the Attorney General, and uh, I just had to make a very tough call, and I did it. But he's a good man. Yes. Mr. President, when did you make this decision in your own mind, and when did you call Judge Thomas to... Uh... Well, I called him yesterday and told him I was getting very, very close in keeping the faith with those who were at the golf course. I called him after I came back from the golf course. But, uh, and then I closed the deal today. I had one or two uh, points that I wanted to make to him to see that he felt comfortable with them. Uh, I wanted to be sure that uh, he know there, knew they were from me that there was no litmus test involved. I told him if it's not violating a privacy, uh, that, uh, that he ought to do like the umpire, call him as you see him, and I'm satisfied he will. But uh, I guess I could say the final decision was made sitting in our living room, but it was pretty well established when I talked to him yesterday afternoon that that's what I wanted. Do any other candidates? No, I did not. Do you feel as though this appointment will have any effect on your ability to get a civil rights bill through the Congress? I don't think it has anything to do with it at all. Do you anticipate any problems in the confirmation here? Nope. Not if everyone's as fair as I think they will be. I think that there will be questions raised. Uh, I would hope there would not be political considerations. But uh, look, it's you've seen confirmation hearings before, and you know that there's different people come in with a wide array of different questions, many of them philosophical. But um, I'm satisfied that, uh, that uh, this man will, will pass muster. Got it? Yeah. All right, I don't want to keep you, get you messed up in domestic politics here, Judge. So good luck, and I'll see you in a few minutes. May I duly note that that's the first pre press conference my family has attended, and the first one at which there's been any applause. I hope this will continue. John.